when you switch on a small torch, electricity flows from the batteries or dry cells through the metal strip or wire to the globe and then back to the batteries again. The metal strip or wire is said to be a conductor because it allows electricity to pass through it. However, it doesn't go straight through. The metal offers some resistance. Now that's not always a bad thing because the filament of the globe is a metal and by offering resistance it gets very hot, it glows, it gives out light energy. So that's a good thing. But sometimes resistance can be a bit of a nuisance. Some materials are very good conductors indeed. Have a look at this. That's a little dark coloured disc. It's actually made of several things. It's made from barium and copper and another element called yttrium. And uh, those things have been put together in a special way in a furnace and it's made into a little ceramic disc. In other words, it's very much in some ways like uh, other ceramic things that you might think of. China, for example, they're ceramics as well. Doesn't look very special now, does it? I'll put it in that tiny little dish which I've made by cutting the bottom of a coffee cup off. It's made of foam plastic. And then I'll place on top of that a little magnet. Now, to show that it is a magnet, let me take these metal tweezers and you'll see that it's a very powerful magnet indeed. So I'll take that magnet and just sit it on top of our ceramic disc. Nothing special happens at all at this point. However, if I lower the temperature of the ceramic down, 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 something quite unusual will occur. To change the temperature, I'm going to use the same stuff that we used at the beginning of the program. Do you remember that? Liquid nitrogen. It's at a temperature of about minus 196 degrees Celsius. That's why I'm wearing protective gloves and glasses. I have some liquid nitrogen in this coffee cup and I'm going to pour this in around the ceramic disc. There it is, look at that, bubbling away. Now watch that little magnet carefully because as the ceramics temperature gets lower and lower it does some funny things. It becomes a superconductor. In other words, if we passed electricity through it, it would offer no resistance at all. But also it does something else. It acts in a strange way towards magnetic fields. Now that little rectangular thing on top, that strong magnet is giving out a magnetic field and look what's happening now. The disc below it is starting to repel that magnetic field and the whole thing floats up in the air, that little magnet. This is sometimes called the Meissner effect. And uh, if you think that it's being held there by strings, have a look at this. I'll take a little piece of cardboard. I can pass it right underneath and you can see that it's just sitting there apparently defying gravity. This effect is sometimes called levitation. Watch what happens if I push with the end of this pen. Push it down and it's just pushed back. If I push it over to one side, it just seems to spin around. I'll take a pencil point and give it quite a hard flick on one side and it just spins, apparently offering no resistance at all. You are observing one of the most remarkable scientific discoveries of the 20th century, the Meissner effect. And it's all to do with superconductors. And think of some of the applications that we may see of this effect in years to come. We may see levitation trains in which the rails are made of ceramic materials like this and little magnets underneath the train uh, enable it to just skim along without anything touching or scraping on anything at all. They may be able to travel very fast indeed. Also, superconductors are going to help us to come up with new instruments for medical research, new equipment for geological exploration, and also more powerful computers. In the years to come, you are certainly going to hear a lot more about these superconductors. I want to know.